you can see my screen. I believe you can see my screen. Okay, okay. Uh, awesome. So hi again, I am Lucy, my full name is <laughs> yeah, Lucy Njoki Njuki. I do welcome you all. So we are just the three of us, but feel welcome to today's discussion. Um, I'll be the facilitator for this particular cohort so with the help of Ryan, who's with us. And Ryan, please say hi. I cannot hear you. No, you're good. No, no, I'm, I'm saying, uh, please, please say hi, since you are my, yeah, my co-facilitator, yeah. Uh, awesome. Uh, I'm Ryan Metcalf. Uh, I'll be assisting Lucy with this particular cohort. Uh, we are going through some uh, initial book club um, setup features anyway, and we'll get those resolved for next week as well. Um, this will be my... Oh, I'm going to put it at ninth book club, 10th book club uh, in the R4DS community. Um, at this moment for about the last year and a half, I've been extremely active uh, with many of our book clubs. Um, some of them have a tendency to uh, trail off towards the later chapters of a book club. Uh, usually um, we have scheduling conflicts and so therefore sometimes uh, people will start to come in and out, et cetera. Uh, it appears we have three individuals uh, today uh, with this particular initial entry. Um, I was in the cohort two version of our Mastering Shiny Book Club. If uh, send that link to the repo real quick, that uh, uh, John did reply uh, a moment ago and mentioned that we are going to be updating slash committing to this existing uh, book club. So these slides will be active. And then what we're gonna do is a pull request uh, or a branching, I guess, to your local copy. And then as we, update, change, modify, et cetera, we'll push back to this repo. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, Ren. And um, so uh, for today's discussion, we'll first of all start by introducing ourselves. You can tell us which country you're from and what do you do. And then uh, so Ren and I were stuck in creating some polls. So we'll use the chat. Yeah, I think chat will work for, for today's session. So yeah, uh, but uh, I can start. I or <laughs> either you can start. Okay, let me start. So I I am Lucy again. I am from Kenya. Yeah, at the moment I'm from Kenya. I am doing my masters, um, my my MEC, so your masters of science in statistics in data science well specializing in the statistics at Hassel University, but I'm doing the distance learning program. So I am yeah doing from my home country. Yeah, I, I am also the organizer of Art Ladies Nairobi. And so far we have had a very good uh, ride by um, promoting gender diversity in the art community in Nairobi, Kenya. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for being here. And I look forward to learning with you all at uh, this book. Yeah, I, I firstly learned of Shiny Apps last year, uh, sorry, not last year, 2019, no, 2020, sorry, yes, two years ago. And uh, they blew my mind. I was like, this can't be possible. Just writing a very small piece of code and generating a web app, this is quite fascinating. So I created one, which wasn't really good. And uh, right now I look forward to gaining more knowledge and creating a better one. So, yeah. Um, I will just, uh, Brendan, please uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and then we'll be follow followed by Ryan. Okay, um, hello everyone, my name is Brendan. Um, I'm currently working as a research assistant at a children's hospital here in Toronto, Canada, um, but I'll be joining Yale in the fall to study clinical psychology. Um, I'm a long time R user, um, but I've always used it to just analyze data. Um, so this summer, I'm looking to really up my skills in programming, creating shiny apps and that sort of thing by joining these book clubs. So thank you both for helping set this up. Um, and I've created a couple of shiny apps. Um, they've been more for um, didactic purposes. So to demonstrate various statistical concepts, but um, I'm looking to also improve my skills there. 
Awesome. Hi, Ryan. Uh, again, I'm Ryan. Uh, I am also in the same book club with Brennan uh, in the uh, uh, our packages uh, book club. So that's nice to uh, see you again. Um, in relation to using Shiny, uh, I have have multiple uh, avenues that I've exercised this web app with. Um, I am a training manager for a rail uh, uh, vendor, uh, an OEM, original equipment manufacturer. Uh, in that context, I've used uh, Shiny for scheduling uh, for classes, uh, being able to coordinate uh, workforce, et cetera. I've used Shiny in a pseudo statistical manner, but I've not been very good at uh, rendering statistics. So that's a, a learning curve for me. Um, in relation to HTML and, and just all things web development, um, I am a senior tech writer as well. And so I exercise a lot of our uses of core HTML. In the previous cohort uh, using Mastering Shiny, there were points within the document or my intent for this uh, second round of Mastering Shiny Book Club. I want to bridge the links of how our studio as a service or the R language itself uh, renders that HTML output and then how to access both cascading style sheets, JavaScript, and reactivity in general. In attendance, uh, or in addition to Mastering Shiny, I was also a part of Russ Hyde's uh, engineering production grade Shiny apps uh, last uh, book club as well. Uh, and that book was written by Colin Fay. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think that's Jumping Rivers, but I need to confirm that before I uh, state that for sure. Uh, it's a company out of England uh, or Britain that uh, focuses on learning development and statistical modeling in general. Uh, they're very web-centric uh, output. And so uh, between those two book clubs, uh, learning how to author in R, render in Shiny, and then also manipulate uh, the under the hood JavaScript and, and cascading style sheet components of it. Um, I think that's all I was going to say at this moment, Lucy, if we want to keep going. Okay. Yeah, awesome. I uh, thank you so much for introducing yourselves. And I think by introducing yourselves, we have answered the two questions that if you've ever created a Shiny app, so all of us have, and uh, how was the experience? I, I believe in our answers we have. Mine was exciting. Yeah, I um, ran as described and uh, Brendan, yeah, Brendan has described as well. So thank you. So I, as we have done in the, in the other book clubs that I'm glad all of us are part of is that we will discuss the chapters for this book. It is 23 chapters. And this is the mastering book by Dr. Hadley. So we'll, we'll be meeting each week at the same time. And um, so for, the, for each chapter, one of us will lead the discussion. So these are just the norms of the book clubs. And I'd urge each of us to participate as it will first ensure that we all read the chapter and it will also enable us to, it will seal the understanding, sorry, of the chapter. So um, having said that, these are signing, the sign up, sign up sheets, and I can, sorry, copy the link. Yeah, so in that sheet, you will see um, a suggested date, but please note that the date can change. We have uh, the different, so first of all, it has been divided into four blocks, that is the four parts of this book. And uh, the chapter number, the chapter name, and lastly, whoever will be leading the discussion. So I have volunteered to first to lead the first chapter. So we'll start today a bit. And then so I am really requesting you to participate by signing up and let's get uh, this, this cohort going. Okay. Um, so for the learning objectives, I suggested we use the previous cohorts, but please feel free to update this if you disagree or you have other things to add on, as this is a collaborative open source project to create these notes. So the book club repo has been shared by uh, Ren 
and Ren will, as, as I finish up, Ren will tell us about how to go about it. So if you have never worked with a guitar before, Ren will guide us. And lastly, the Mastering Shiny book, uh, the link I will share shortly, the open source book that we'll be referring to. And um, if you're looking into, sorry, if you're looking for a shiny project to get some experience as we read this book, please feel free to join the book lab uh, channel. And um, so in there, we'll, we'll be discussing the ways to improve the book club sign up experience. Yeah, kind of like an assignment after what we discuss here, which is kind of like a class. Yeah. And um, so please note that John will share the recording of how to contribute walkthrough that was done by cohort two. So please be on the lookout for that. And I, I invite Ren again to tell us about the triple and if he has anything else to add. And I so look forward to learning with you all. Thank you. So I'm going to, uh, Lucy, if you don't mind, I'm gonna share screens real quick. That's all right. And let me yes. move this screen over here. We are doing this completely live at the moment. So let me make sure that I'm sharing the correct book club tab. Move that window present. There we go. And let's request sharing. And we're gonna do desktop two and share. It's outstanding. All right, so what I'm showing here is going to be our book club, uh, R4DS book club, R Shiny, uh, Mastering Shiny, M Shiny. And this was the link that I posted in our chat window for this Zoom session. Uh, this will be posted in our Slack channel for the uh, Mastering Shiny book club post, uh, post meeting. This particular book club uh, was updated again the, the last time we touched this and uh, you'll you may see some additional con contributions from the cohort number one uh, in, as well the way you want to branch this particular repo if you notice at the top left it says r4ds and then book club mastering shiny uh, you won't have direct access of read write uh, uh, application here so what you want to do is in this window you want to fork the uh, the uh, project okay by forking the project what that's going to do is make a local copy under your github username if you haven't signed up for github yet um, i presume that we all three have uh, but if we haven't uh, it's a very simple process to acquire a github account when you go to this particular link and then fork, it's going to make a copy under your username. Okay. From that point, what I'm recommending we do is also create another branch under your fork. So again, forking is making a copy for you. Branching is going to create a separate instance of that specific to this cohort three. Okay, so let's do this real quick. If I can do it on the fly. Uh, I'm going to just go to my book club cohort number two version, and I'm going to create a new branch of that. So let's go to my repos real quick, and we're going to go to Mastering Shiny, which will be down here a ways. There we go. Now, the difference in this particular screen is now we're looking at my version or my copy. And the key here is what you'll notice. So this is a branch actually from... Colin uh, Berkey, which was the cohort two uh, facilitator. So this is probably not an area I want to be in. So I'm going to go back up a version. And let's just fork this over again. So we'll do this on the fly. There we go. Create a fork. So while this is happening, um, it's it, again, it's in the background uh, that this is happening, but. Uh, fork copy of your repository. Forking repository allows you to freely experiment with changes without affecting the original project. Again, we don't have read write access directly to the R4DS communities uh, version of this book club. So we've already forked that. I'm going to say that it, I may have to change this slightly. All right, I'll go ahead and just do Colin's version of it then. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to create a branch. 
And to do that is right underneath here, you'll see that it's currently under main. So we're gonna change this. We're gonna create a new branch and let's call this, um, I need to, Yeah, I'm doing this live, so I'm trying to find the exact command. Normally, it's a it's a uh, command line where you branch, uh, and then that sends up sends it back to your repo uh, that creates a new a new branch of it. How do you do this from the web UI? Brendan, are you familiar with GitHub and and how to actually commit a or or create a a branch of a repo? Have you done that in the past? I've done it before. Yeah. It, is there a web UI version of it or is it from command line that we need to branch it from? Yeah, that I'm not sure. Okay. I, I don't recall if there is a, a manner in the, from your, from your web UI that I'm showing here. If I go back one level. Yeah. What I'm trying to do is down here, it's just going to allow me to search the existing branches. I don't have one created yet. Uh, so what we want to do is generate a new branch of this particular code, but I don't know if you can do that from the uh, web version of GitHub. I think it's a, a direct command line entry of, of doing that. Let me find that real quick. Uh, Lucy, I'm going to stop sharing and I'll search for that particular string of text and I'll post it in, into our channel. Ultimately, okay. when you when you pull that information down, uh, pull your GitHub repo down, uh, you're going to get this long string of web URL uh, specific to your username and then what the, the repo's title is. By uh, selecting this particular link, pulling it down local to your machine allows you editing capability. So now the repo is mirrored or copied to your, your local machine. Uh, you make your modifications, you change everything that you do, and then we can push those changes back up to our uh, uh, repo. Let's do this real quick. Lucy, give okay. me one more moment. I'm gonna try to change to a different repo here and see if I can just open up a different R session here. Yeah, I was doing chapter 23, which was performance at the very end of that book club. So yeah. let's open up this initial chapter one version. So this is our cohort two version. Uh, I'm assuming this was probably generated by Colin when we created this uh, last August. In this particular case, if I modified this, let's say, uh, hello, uh, this is and update to cohort three. All right, and if I save that file, what I want you to see occur is you'll see that it opens up here where I have a modification, okay? Yeah. So we're gonna select that and we're gonna commit that change. That's not where I want it, there we go. We're gonna commit that change. This opens up another window where we can enter our change notes. So let's say, updating chapter two or chapter one for cohort three. Uh, there is a limited amount of characters you can put here. There we go. So you can see, I think it's the same as like 160 characters, but, um, and then we commit. Once we commit that stage is local to our machine. And then after that stage is complete, then we will push. Move that out of the way for a second. Close that and we push. And so now what that did is it uploaded to my personal local copy. Then I would create a PR request, pull request, and send that uh, over to our uh, R4DS com communities version. And we'll review that pull request, we'll accept it, and then we'll incorporate it into the uh, existing. And that's kind of a GitHub workflow of changing, committing, et cetera. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I'll go, I'll go ahead and stop now. There we go. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, that was really helpful.
Yeah. Um, so I, I want to start, like we look at the, the very chapter zero <laughs> in the preface and what we'll be covering. So at least we have a gist of what to expect. Um, yeah. Okay, I, I think my, my screen, yeah, my screen is visible enough. So I've, I've shared, oh, sorry, I haven't shared. Um, yes, you just allow me for a minute. Let me share that book. Yeah. So that's the online version for the book, uh, for the book. Yes, so um, this book is designed to take us from knowing nothing about Shiny to being expert developers who can write large complex code that are still maintainable and performant. So again, these are the cohort notes for the previous, uh, the notes for the previous cohorts. So let's start by introducing what Shiny is. So Shiny is an art package that does allow us to create rich interactive web app, web app, sorry. So Shiny also allows us to take our work in R and expose it, uh, expose it via a web browser so that every, anyone can use it. And secondly, it's that Shiny makes it easier to create web apps and that is doing, that is by firstly providing a carefully curated set of user interface functions, a UI in short, and that generate HTML, CSS, and JavaScript needed for the common tasks. And uh, the author, Dr. Hadley, also said that, okay, we don't need to know the HTML to be able to um, write the user, uh, user UI functions. Yeah, um, so that's good. But then if you want to do, I realize in the shiny contest that these two come in handy. So it's good to know as well. Um, secondly, it's that it introduces a new style of programming and this is called the reactive programming. And this automatically tracks dependencies of pieces of codes. What this means is whenever an input changes, shiny will automatically figure out how to do the smallest amount of work to update all related outputs. So some of the uses of Shiny apps, I've just mentioned two, but there are a couple of them. So firstly, you can create dashboards and this help to track important high level performance indicators while facilitating, facilitating the drill, drill down into metrics sorry, that need more investigation. The other use is that it provides self-service data analysis workflow. So you don't need to keep on hearing from clients or uh, colleagues about your work. You can easily just provide them with a shiny app. Um, so who should read this book? Um, I think all of us. <laughs> yeah, so our users who are interested in shiny, in, in learning about shiny to turn the analysis in a web, in sorry, analysis in interactive web apps. That's definitely like me. And also um, existing Shiny users who, use, who want to improve their knowledge of theory underlying Shiny to write higher quality apps um, faster and more easily. So what we will learn, we will, the book is divided into four parts. So the first part is getting started. And here we will learn the basic uh, the basics of Shiny, that is the basic structure, um, useful UI components, and the foundations of reactive programming. The second part is Shiny in action, and here we will build on the basics to help to help us solve common problems that include giving feedback to the user, uh, uploading and load, downloading data, uh, generating UI with code, um, reducing code duplication, and lastly using Shiny to program the tidyverse. The third part is on mastering reactivity. And here we will go down in, we'll go deep into uh, the theory and practice of reactive programming and the programming uh, paradigm that underlines Shiny. 
and the last part, which is on best practices, we will finish up um, a survey of useful techniques for making shiny apps that work well in production. Uh, so we, it, we, we will learn how to decompose complex apps into functions and modules, how to use packages to organize our code, how to test our code to ensure that it is correct, and lastly, how to measure and improve performance. So for the Prodigo site, definitely you need to have installed R in R Studio, and the packages that we'll be using for this particular, uh, in all our discussions here they are, um, you may install them. No, please do install them. Okay, so that is the preface and welcome. So if we can go to the first, uh, the first chapter, which is your first shiny app. Lucy, if you don't mind, I was going to make okay. a comment in that uh, preface uh, or the beginning. The uh, the concept here is reactive programming. So in, in the references of terminology within R uh, or within Shiny, a reactive call is a handshake between your UI, meaning the browser itself and the server of where this is being hosted at. In most cases, locally, when you generate your code, you have a web server. Uh, so the idea would be you can self-contain your Shiny app in one file extension, uh, meaning just app.r. And by running it or calling on Shiny, it will create its own web server. And then you're interacting from a browser to that server. If you were to host this on Shiny IO, as an example, that server is going to be located somewhere else. And that concept of that reactive call, uh, it starts in chapter three, but we really, really focus on it uh, almost four or five chapters in that uh, later section of our, our document. Throughout this entire text, throughout this entire book, there will be continuous references back to that reactive call and how to optimize that particular uh, exercise. In your mind, the way you want to uh, remember the word reactive is just the relationship between the browser and the server itself. And that's just a common web, uh, like, a, like a front end, back end type handshake, uh, web development type handshake. And then the second I was going to mention, Lucy, and when I was introducing myself, I failed to uh, include that. There are better services or I guess there's there's multiple environments that you can generate or write your code in. Uh, we're not talking about just the operating system between Linux, Windows, or Mac uh, computers. If you have a cloud-based version of RStudio, so this is RStudio Connect, uh, and I don't remember the new naming convention of the uh, paid service. There's a free account that you can create, but there's a paid version of this uh, RStudio uh, cloud-based orientation. Shiny apps development on that cloud-based service can be tricky because it doesn't create that, it, it creates the server, but you're not actually working local to your machine, right? So the, the code doesn't open up in your browser. And sometimes that can be a little bit of a, a uh, hurdle to overcome if you choose to develop in that uh, service. If you don't mind me asking real quick, uh, Lucy, I believe your computer, everything is probably local. I don't think you're using that cloud service that I'm aware of. Um, Brendan, if you don't yes. mind me asking yourself, do you use a cloud service provider for your R Studio, or is it also loaded local to your machine, sir? Yep, it's local for me. Good, good. I only make that comment. Uh, I do have an R Studio Connect uh, uh, web service, and when I was initially going through this book club, trying to be agnostic to operating system, I realized that that web service use of of R Shine, excuse me, R Studio, uh, did not allow me to create that UI. Uh, it, it would open up the server, but then how do you connect to that server? That was always a little bit of a hurdle. So I just wanted to throw that in there, Lucy, before we moved into chapter one, if that's okay. Yes, that was really helpful. I like the analogy of the handshake. Yeah, it has made things, <laughs> you get to understand better. Yeah, so thank you for the comments. Okay, uh, so for the first chapter again is we cr will create our first Shiny app. So, so for the learning objectives, firstly we'll learn how to create a simple Shiny app. We'll then define the leanest version of an app you can build. 
I reviewed the different ways to start and stop the app and I identified two key components of every Shiny app. Understand how, to, how the two components are connected and lastly, observe how Shiny apps react to user in inputs. Okay, so the first section is on introduction and here we will create a very simple Shiny app we learn the two components of the, the we learn the two components of every shiny app that is the UI and UI does define how an app looks and the second component which is server and this does define how our app works so I, again shiny uses reactive programming to automatically update outputs when inputs change so this was an illustration from the previous cohort notes and I, it made sense. So we have different inputs, and then the app uh, calculates, sorry, um, and then it provides an output which changes if the inputs do differ. Each time you put differ, different inputs, sorry. Um, we'll then learn the third component towards the end of this chapter, that is the reactive expressions. So if we haven't installed Shiny, we use the install.packages function to install it. And uh, it's best to check the version because we need to work with 1.5.0 or greater. So I did check um, the installed version, which was 1.71. .1. I then I loaded the Shiny package using the library function and yes it is loaded um so yeah so that is the first bit the second section is now let's create that simple app um so we can create a simple app by creating a new directory for our app and then adding a single file this the app.r so this file tells shiny both how our app how both how our app should look and how it should behave. So I, what I did, I, I think if you can see this script, so I created the app.r script and I, I loaded the library shiny. So I have the UI, I have the UI and I have the server and then I have, sorry, and then I have this function to be able to run that app. So let's discuss them, then we'll see how, okay, we can run this app first. Um, what can you, can, can you see the, the app itself? Um, I'm not sure what you can see. What can you see? Right now we've, we're looking at your RStudio. If that ah, did okay. pop open a uh, window, uh, you may have to pull that over into a, a viewing. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. There you go. Yes. So this is the simple app that you've created. Well, the book said hello world, but yes, hello code three members. So this is basically the user interface, but for this app, we don't have the server yet. So yes, how the app should behave. We just have whatever that you're seeing that will be covering that in as the chapter unfolds. Okay. Lucy, we do have uh, Mohit that has just joined us as well. And oh, I was okay. communicating to uh, feel welcome to uh, unmute and or uh, introduce uh, yourself if you would like. Uh, yes, please. Hi, everyone. Am I audible? We can hear you. Okay. Uh, hi. So this is my first book club meeting. Sorry for the background noise. Uh, I'm, I belong to... Uh, uh, northern state in India. I work in uh, information technology as a R programmer and uh, basically as a data analyst in supply chain. And I majorly deal with forecasting problems. So that's my core area. And I had been wanting to learn R shiny. I have done some basic visualizations or reporting using uh, Flex dashboard and those things. Very, very, very basic and things. So uh, was interested in joining a cohort of, uh, of fellow learners where they embark on a journey of mastering shiny. So let's see, like, yeah, 
excited to be here. Sam, uh, thank you so much, Sonny, for the introduction and welcome. We have just started, uh, well, we started a couple of minutes ago, where we looked at uh, the preface. So basically what we'll be covering uh, for this book and the chapters we'll be covering. And uh, please note these sign sheets. Yeah, a sign up sheet, sorry, a sign up sheet where you can, um, so for the book club, each chapter, one of us will lead a particular chapter. So please feel free to uh, sign up and, I, yeah, uh, so the book is meant for all the levels of all users. So those want to adapt to the knowledge they have or literally beginners. So um, yeah, don't be, don't fret. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Awesome. Um, so yeah, so we have seen our simple app that displayed a uh, hello world. Hello, sorry. Hello, God, three. Yeah, and the book is that says hello world. Okay, I want, I have to stop sharing it or how, what can you see? I am, um, I need to, sorry, this is the next time it will be better. What can you see? Can you see? Currently it's your applet, uh, the web applet okay. is open. So I have to, okay. Mm. Now you can see our studio, right? There we go. Now we're back. Okay. Okay. So from this code that has the library uh, UI and server and shiny app, so these are the things that these are the things that our app does. So we see first of all it calls the library shiny and this loads the shiny package. The second thing it does it defines the UI um, and this is the HTML web page that we humans uh, interact with. And here we see a, a page that only contains the, word, the words hello cohort three members. And the third thing that it's, it shows is that it defines a server function and this shows the behavior of our app. Like I've mentioned, for this particular app, it is empty as our app doesn't do anything yet. And the fourth thing that we see is that it executes the Shiny app having the UI and server parameters. And what this does, it, it is to construct and start a Shiny application from the UI and server. So next we are provided for our studio tips to create uh, a new app in our studio. So the first but is you, the first one is to create a new directory. So here file and then, oh, sorry. It was, I think here, yeah, here. And then you create a new project, either that, the file, the new project, or here, just a new project. Then you specify that you specify, you select a new directory and, and also you choose the Shiny app application. So that is for the first part, the first tip, sorry. The second tip is then, if you have installed and created, if you've already sorry, created the, the app.r file, you can quickly add the app a boilerplate by typing the shiny app and pressing shift tab. This was really mind blowing. I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, yeah I found that to be quite fascinating. That, oh. uh, that shiny app call, that function call creates that, uh, the uh, uh, text. So from the, the programmatic actual package of Shiny, uh, it, it generates that initial text entry. The one yeah. comment here on this second bullet where you have app.r, if you were to follow the uh, new Shiny app uh, uh, from your R studio, uh, there is somewhere in that workflow, there's a selection uh, check mark where it says, do you want to create a single file app.r or do you want to separate and have ui.r and server.r there okay. is no there is no uh, good or bad for selecting the two and we will find that through mastering shiny or if you were to uh, continue your education into the engineering production grade shiny apps what you will find is it's actually better to have two separate services for 
UI and server. You just need to make sure that those are both in the same directory when you render your application so that it can call on both, uh, both, both services. The reason you want to separate them as your Shiny app grows, the actual uh, linear text starting at, you know, uh, line number one all the way to, you know, infinity, however large that file becomes, uh, the, the instructions you're providing to that Shiny app, if you start to separate and make those uh, very specific uh, function calls, documentation, the server calls, etc., if you put them in their, their respective places, it makes your overall application um, easier to maintain as it grows into a, a larger uh, service. So just a comment there between the app.r and then the uh, option of creating the two different directories. Oh, okay, uh, thank you. Okay, sorry, I was taking notes. <laughs> uh -huh. um, Yes, so for today's discussion, I had only prepared till the first two sections. So I, I was thinking we proceed with the from 1.3 that is running and stopping. Yeah, um, if it is okay with you all. Here is Lucy, if you don't mind, I was just gonna point out uh, before you move from this particular screen, if everyone can focus their attention on the top left corner, sorry, top right corner of Lucy's screen, you'll notice that you have an, a run app function uh, that was called that generated your web server. Uh, the applet that uh, Lucy was sharing a moment ago where it has welcome cohort three. The second line of text, this blue text says listening on HTTP, and then your loopback service 127.0.0.1. That's actually pointing back at her computer. That's where the, I won't call it magic of, of URLs come in, but it's, it's really a focus of us as authors of this Shiny app to recognize that she created a web service, RStudio or the Shiny package created a web service on her machine. And then she's pointing back at her computer and specifically in this particular case, it's port 6717. Now that port identification is randomly selected. So depending on how many different web utilities you have running on your machine, you may see that it will auto generate a different port. That's okay. Just know that you're pointing at that uh, uh, service. If this were a cloud-based orientation and you, you ran your code, that particular URL, you may have to, to point your web browser at that uh, IP address or URL and the port identification uh, for you to render or to interact with the server. So, and this is, Lucy, the, the purpose or the intent of why I'm explaining this concept. A lot of our, okay. a lot of our cohorts or a lot of our, our uh, staff, or sorry, our book club members uh, throughout many, there's an underlying technology HTML that's being rendered here. And a lot of team members are very good at data analytics, data science, statistician, uh, you know, some computer science, et cetera. But we may often miss the, I guess, protocol of how all of this these services come together and operate. So as we branch from our comfort zone of our studio and we start interacting with this more web browser form, we need to start recognizing this more web technology concept of namespace variables, uh, reactivity, the comment I was making about the, the handshake between server and client. Um, so the, the initial run app creates that web server it creates that small applet that you can interact with. Um, just throwing that in there. I'll come back to this topic probably quite a few times throughout this particular book club. Awesome. Oh, oh, okay, I, is there anyone who has a question? Tell what you've covered so far. I don't hear any question. Okay, I will stop sharing my screen. So for the, let me share again. I, or you can see, okay, I can easily just share again. Um, they send a Google Doc.
So at the moment, I have suggested, I have volunteered for the first chapter. So I have volunteered for the first chapter and Ryan has volunteered for the second and the sixth chapter. So please feel free to volunteer for the incoming chapters so that we are able to know early in advance the chapter that you want to work on. I... Posted that uh, same I, link yeah. again. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just opened the Google Doc. Let me just. Okay, so. I need to opt in for third chapter. The obligation. Then, yeah, the obligation, Mohit. When we go through all of these services or these chapters, um, the signing up or, or committing to generating or producing delivering that particular chapter. Um, the idea is that you're not completely held accountable. Uh, it's, it's, it's good that you're volunteering to present that um, for the mm. order of precedence. It would be good that uh, if you do commit to a chapter uh, that you are uh, in attendance and, and capable of delivering that content. Um, should there be any conflicts or, or unable to attend that particular uh, date and time, that particular chapter, um, it's very fluid. So as we roll through week over week in a one hour session, uh, there will be times where that next chapter will bleed into the next section uh, or the next session. And so the, the calendar is, is our uh, intent, our hope to meet those dates, but it may, uh, it's very fluid. <laughs> it may shift uh, as we go down. And if you do volunteer, uh, both yourself or Brennan, if you do happen to commit to a particular chapter and aren't able to uh, present, don't feel um, terrible about that. Uh, both myself and Lucy uh, are intended to take up that uh, delivery if required. So. Okay. okay. It is good to get involved in the chapters. Uh, it is good to uh, attempt to render the text or the exercises that they have in the document. Um, in many of our cohorts, I find that uh, that is usually a speed bump, the exercises, uh, mm -hmm. as we start to explain. And if you were to connect with the presentation but haven't actually done the exercises, things start to get a little bit weird. Um, if you find that you're at a disadvantage with the presenter and, and the subject that we are explaining at that time. Um, but I also try to convey the fact that we are all in a learning community. And so nobody will pass judgment for the fact that you haven't read the chapter. Um, so it, it is uh, intended to be uh, a helpful and, and supportive community. Okay, okay. So I, I'll put up for third chapter. Sorry, let me just type in my name. Yeah. Always, always feel welcome uh, to ping any of us on Slack if, if required. Um, I've set up many meetings with between myself and Lucy, uh, even prior to this. Uh, try to make yourself available uh, to answer questions. Uh, I have not turned on the mentor flag in Slack, uh, but I do attempt to fulfill that requirement. Uh, there's pretty much no question that anybody has asked that I, I probably don't have an answer for. Uh, and if I don't know the direct answer, I will definitely cite or research and give you an answer back for sure. I actually have a question in the few minutes remaining. So when I was creating the notes, I was a bit confused into which RMD I need to. So I realized there's the shiny web app RMD and there's the just the normal RMD that you used to. Um, what could be the difference between the two? I see you're you're asking about the markdown document, the R markdown yes. document. Okay, yes, yes, so yes. Uh, there's two things that are happening within the repo itself. The presentation media, when you generate it, uh, it's intended the web link that says GitHub R for DS Book Club M Shiny. If you go to that link, it's going to open up your GitHub repo. There is also a uh, 
book club index.html, the first bullet, what you're doing is accessing GitHub's web server that has already rendered the HTML of that document uh, using Bookdown. To answer your question, Lucy, in respect to the RMD files, when you are generating or documenting the RMD file, stitches or nits is the right term. Uh, it, uh, the book, uh, R markdown is the package and then book down, book down is the second package. Book down is what generates your RMD file into the overarching uh, chapter lineup. So when you when you stitch or when you knit the book and you have your, your uh, left-hand side table of contents, uh, sometimes you'll find that if you're only knitting that one file, if you uh, if you select another chapter, it hasn't generated that code. Uh, and so there, it just shows up a white screen and you have to close it and reopen it again. If you go to the actual book down, that is a more collective whole of multiple RMD files together. So what I'm trying to convey is that there are multiple RMD files contained in, all of those RMDs become your presentation media. Uh, so we are using R Markdown for uh, presentation. And I can show you that. Uh, I know we're getting close to the end of our time here, but if you would like, I can jump in next week and briefly talk about that kind of RMD concept, R Markdown yes, concept. That will, yes, that will be really helpful. Yeah. I, you I actually didn't know the shiny app RMD that did exist till today. So yes, please. Uh, Okay, I I think we can stop here and we can proceed from next week, same time, and we'll proceed with the first chapter. And um, so I, like I've mentioned, there is, if you want to do um, like, like an assignment, kind of like an assignment after our discussion, there is the how to contribute and there'll be a walkthrough video that will be a recording, sorry, that will be shared by John. Please be on the lookout. It's just the Mastering Shiny, uh, the book club channel. Yeah, and um, yeah, feel free to reach out and join the book club channel and engage in, in the conversations. Yeah, that, that's it. Yes, I, I, I think Sony, I hadn't mentioned that to Sony, so I, I thought you should know as well. Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, I have yourself a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, <laughs> whatever point of the day uh, where you are. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.